evening, you guys, and thank you for joining us at God's Will Christian Fellowship Bible Study. Amen. Amen. Today we are going to be studying from the book of Romans, chapter 8. And uh, if you all just join with me in prayer. Father God, we come to you yet once again, just as humble as we know how. Father God, we want to thank you for allowing us to meet and gather and to hear your word, Father God, to study and abide by your word, Father. Father God, I just ask for a special blessing for everyone that is here in study, Holy Father. I ask that you touch us each one by one and then touch us all together as a body of Christ. Yeah. Father God, I ask that you give us clarity and understanding to your word this evening. Yeah. Father God, we need you and we can't get along without you. Yeah. And Father God, for those who are watching on other devices, we ask for a special blessing for them as well, for those who could not be with us today. Father, I ask for a special blessing for each and every one of us. Yes, and as Lord. long as we have breath in our bodies, we'll be ever so mindful to give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. So uh, this evening, like I said, we're going to study from the book of Romans, chapter 8. So we all have our printouts. Everybody get a printout? Mm -hmm. yep. Pastor, I put your printout over there. Thank you. And I am going to be reading from the NIV version this evening. We're going to start with, I'm going to read from verse 1 through verse 4. Therefore, there is now no condemnation mm -hmm. for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law right. of sin and death. Yeah. For what the law was powerless to do mm. because, it, because it was weakened by the flesh. All right. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Mm -hmm. And so he condemned sin in the flesh mm -hmm. in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You guys have any questions about that? One thing that I noticed in um, these few verses, one through four, I like it when it said, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Right. So to me that, it just rang to me that as long as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we have an opportunity to no longer live by the law. And there is no condemnation. As we go about the earth and we go by God's will, then he has a special plan for us. That's what I got out of that. Any, any, do you have any questions? Any comments? I just always like to read the, my addresses. Um, uh, for one, they, uh, Eight one, mm -hmm. it says not guilty. Let him go free. What would those words mean to you if you were <laughs> if you were on death row? The fact is that the whole human race is on death row. Mm -hmm. Yes, we just condemned from re repeat repeatedly breaking God's holy law. Without Jesus, we would we would have no hope at all. But thank God, He has declared us not guilty Amen. and has offered us free freedom from sin and power to do His will. Amen. Amen. So I like to read those because I mean they have some rich nuggets in there because you know had it not been like you said, we would be. We still where we were before he died on the cross. Exactly, because I was, yeah, I feel like if, had you not accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we would be bound to mm -hmm. So that's definitely what I, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Reverend Mass. 
For the Holy Spirit works exclusively within the new confines of the finished work of Christ. Our faith in that finished work, the cross, guarantees the help of the Holy Spirit, which guarantees victory. Amen. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling real good thinking about rededicating my life Amen. to God again. Um, as we all know, I was baptized back in December. Yeah, so rededicate my life and, and getting a clearer understanding and allowing God to allow me to allow God's will to be done upon my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. So any other Amen. Amen. So I'm I'm now gonna proceed and read from verse five through eight. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. Mm. But those who live according with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Mm -hmm. Any comments, questions? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's talking about believers that's really trying to do things without God and being their self. And you keep going back to that flesh and, and that the flesh because you know that's all of us. It's gonna happen over and over. You know, but we gotta constantly try to. That's why you know you gotta stay in that word and constantly feed your spirit so it can be bigger than the flesh. Because yeah. right now a lot of our flesh is bigger than the spirit. Yes. So the spirit is overcoming the. I mean the flesh is overcoming the spirit. So that's why we keep going back to, to what we're doing, but. If we keep staying in that word and keep building our spirit up, you know, we might do it, but it's to get less and less. Yes. I totally agree with you, Reverend Bears. Uh, as I read this, you know, I I remember telling Pastor that I was feeling disconnected when we were during our quarantine. Mm -hmm. You know, and not to be able to meet with my church family, the body of Christ that God has so freely placed me in. Uh, and not to be able to meet and be around my church family, it was making me feel like my flesh, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and and as as we see, as we read here, mm -hmm. you know, we will be condemned for that. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to focus and keep our mind on. So that's that's what I got out of that. And, and yeah, that was the thing about it is we have to. Uh, you know, even though we, we, we're in this COVID thing, you know, and, and a lot of people depend on people to be around, and they feel they lost without people. But God is saying, how much do you really believe that I'm with you? Yes. How, you know, how much do you believe in the unseen thing? Because people feel they're alone and they don't have nobody around. But, you know, God be saying, hey, I've been here all the time, but you still haven't told me. Right, right. You I, know, because okay. the COVID and stuff and all that stuff is taking away stuff. I'm still here, mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't believe because they don't see it. Right. right. And that's their common mind. Yes, and they want to mm -hmm. believe in things seen. Mm -hmm. And they forget about the things unseen. Right. The
going through the COVID. And then in my position, my, my situation, not only going through that, but then with the death of my son and the anger that I, that, that I felt and even the, the hatred that I, I felt, it really put me in a situation to where I was saying yesterday, am I going to call on God or am I going to let anger and let this hatred build up in me? And that's another reason why we have to be together. Because iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And, yeah. and to know that I do have a church home and I do have a church family and, and, and they can pray over me and help me through this. But the flesh is still fighting. The flesh is still fighting because, you know, day by day there's some anger there. Something comes up to bring it back up. And like he was talking about in one of the other verses where he was saying, I want to do right, I want to do right, but I wind up doing wrong, and then, I'm, but I still want to do right. Was that uh, chapter six or, or mm-hmm. one of the chapters where he was yeah. talking about how when he wants to do wrong, right, mm-hmm. wrong. here comes something to make him even yeah, think wrong. to do wrong. And through each one of these these books, I. I there's something that's been in there that, that's affected me. Mm-hmm. Or that let me see. Mm-hmm. You know, and let me know how to. That I still got to go to God. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the, the, the mm-hmm. verse 5 through, through 8, um, verse 7, which, it stood out to me. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's what it's saying. It does yeah. not submit to God's law. Mm-hmm. Nor, nor can it do so. So as long as we continue to go by our flesh, mm-hmm. thinking with our carnal mind, mm-hmm. we are hostile to God. Yeah. We are not doing what God expects us to do because now we're we're under His grace, and to be clergy of the church, yeah. you know, His we're held to a higher standard. Yeah. So you know to allow our flesh and that's mm-hmm. that's what I was saying too, you know, mm-hmm. not being able to see my church family mm-hmm. to be in the mm-hmm. body of Christ with you guys. I felt like my flesh was taking over. Mm-hmm. And then we started studying the book of Romans because mm-hmm. it's been very rich to me as well. Very rich. Very rich. Brother Mark? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. And, and, and to support what you said and, and what everyone said and even Jesus supported that. Very clear example. In the moment of distress, one need support of others. Mm-hmm. And your who? Perfect example. Jesus was going through a difficult time. He needed to have the support of the disciples to come and help him pray. Mm-hmm. He was alone by himself. Mm-hmm. And then he discovered he was really physically by himself. Now, I mean, yeah. they were not there. Yeah, they all ran away. But they were sleeping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, just like you said, if that can demonstrated by Jesus. And he even indicated to them, he said, you can even come and stay with me. He didn't want to rebuke them, but now, you see the, listen, listen to the stuff. I don't want to sound like Jesus because I wasn't there with him, right. what he was saying, but can you imagine, oh, I did it. You, you guys can even come and stay with me for a moment and you see what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. What the most moment I need you all, but I don't want to go any further. But just to come. Just but to come yeah, because that's how I was feeling. I, exactly. I even mentioned it to Pastor. Exactly. Like, Pastor, so, I need my church yeah, back. And Jesus can feel mm-hmm. the need yeah. of having the support mm-hmm. of the group that is this plan. Followers, his disciples. But even though you want that, but that's right. If they're not available, you have to really turn to well, 
and yeah. go and the Lord, you have to turn to the spirit. Yeah. Exactly. Well, this is why he come to conclusion Jesus was able to go. He didn't feel like, oh, just because I didn't have nobody to come and help me, please, right. that's why I'm done. Right, right, yeah. right. He right. right. just lay down. Right, right. 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 He went through it. It becomes stronger. Yeah. He didn't say, okay, I can't pray because I got nobody with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is why, yeah. again, we talk about it. You should not depend on anybody else except Jesus. Yes. God. That's it. Amen. It's a personal thing. Amen. Yes. John, for example, he could not depend on them. Although he had the desire for the Lord. Stay with them. Yeah, with them. Yeah, stay with them. Yeah. He had the desire, but unfortunately, but remember, those people, the disciples they didn't have anything to do. They were sleeping. Now you made a point. Yeah, I can understand if you call your friend. I'm sorry, I, I have to go taking care of my wife. She's having a baby. I can't come and help you. Yeah, I got that. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't come because I got, even give you an example. I, got to, I just bought a new land. I got to go do measurement. I can't come. Plenty of example. But now, I can't come because I'm sleeping. I'm tired. I'm lazy. I can't even want to pray. I got the spirit to help you. I know you're going through some difficult stuff. I know you're going to die. Every so but no, they didn't know you was going to die. They didn't know that. They didn't know how difficult it was. Right, it right. changed my emotion. Okay. Uh, uh, they didn't right. know. But nevertheless, they didn't, they didn't they fall asleep. They went to bed. Yeah. They let the body, the flesh, like you said, control. And then they went to sleep. And Jesus was by himself praying. Of course, he was not by himself. Per se, feast, you know, the guys were not with him. But, of course, he acknowledged that. That's why he said, oh, did that still not even come? Yeah. Well, because he acknowledged well, it. Well, well, yeah, he acknowledged it. He showed that, hey, he, he let us see that, hey, you, who you need to go to, mm -hmm. rather than depending on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he showed us that mm -hmm. I still went. Mm -hmm. I, st I still went. Yeah. I still right. went. But it's okay. Who do you know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Ah. Uh, hmm? Go ahead, go John. I don't know. He knows. Okay. Uh, just to add to that, as Brother Mark pointed out, there was an occasion in the Bible where people were making excuses when Jesus called them. And they said, oh, I got to go bury my father. He said, let the dead bury the dead and follow me. We come up, we have a lot of excuses that we come up with that, uh, that we try to use to prevent us from doing what God wants us to do. It, it comes down to how badly do we want it. I bet if uh, it was up to um, us to get some money or to do something we really wanted, we wouldn't use those excuses. Exactly. Yeah. We, or, we, or, or they would be real excuses, but we would do it in spite of. Right. When it comes to God, we say, oh, well, you know, it's just God. God understands, so yeah, I'm not going to persevere. I'm not going to change my schedule to accommodate God. I'm, a, I'm just going to do what I want to do, and I'll let the chips fall where they may. We only do that when it comes to God. But if it's something we really want, money, okay. prestige, then we're going to do whatever it takes to get what we want. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to have that same attitude about God. Yeah, we need to keep that same attitude. And that's the same way when, when we're having something at the church. If you mention food. Uh, oh, watch your mouth now. Everybody's food. If you just mention food, if we say every Monday night we're going to have dinner here, we, we would get a house out. Yes, we would. They had them and the kids and everybody else. Yeah, they don't have money. And you know, and, and, you know and, <laughs> it, it's funny we would even be talking about that because as I was preparing for Bible study, I was thinking, well, you know, seven o'clock is a little late for me. I have to be to work at six in the morning. I'm gonna have to tell that. That's too late. But when I walked into this building. The Holy Spirit hit me. Mm -hmm. And I walked with Evangelist Pearl and I said, you know, Pearl, I was gonna uh, complain about how late it is and I could be working six in the morning and I'll be tired, I need my rest. And something told me, well, you get up and go and you don't get to bed till 10, 11 o'clock when you wanna go do something. Uh -huh. When you wanna yeah. go hang out, yeah. be with your friends. Yeah, and no, I gotta be working six in the morning. So I can't use that excuse. Amen. There is no excuse. When it comes to God, we need to step up. 
we need to do what it is he would have us to do. Amen. Especially being in his word. Amen. We need to stay in his word. Amen. I love the way you put that, Reverend Vance, mm -hmm. how we need to study more being, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being, yeah, being a minister. We need to study more, stay in our word more. And I'm going to tell you, um, thank God for me being able to be the teacher this evening. Because I've been in my word all day. Uh, I've been in my word all day. I've been praying all day. And it was so good so and so good. refreshing and yes, so rich. Yes. It makes me want to more and more. more. It makes more. me yearn for more. So I'm, a, I'm assuming today won't be the only day that I put, pick my book up more than once mm -hmm. because it was just a, it was real rich reading, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. it, 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 it your soul. yes, it does. Any others? Okay. At this time, I'm going to read from verse nine through verse eleven. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, mm -hmm. and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject, subjected to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Amen. Amen. That, have a, that means a lot to me. That, you know, yes, that is very rich because as a believer in Christ Jesus and a follower of Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. To hear this, these words here, it gives me confidence. It gives me more, more urge to seek God, to seek more of God. Because I know I will be better off as, as far as I'm not held to the law. I'm not held to sin because I am cho I'm choosing to follow Christ. We all have a choice to do that. We all have a choice and that's what I love most about it is free will and choice. Well, this is what I choose. So that held a lot for me as well. Is there any other comments? Well, you just have to be born to the Spirit. That's why this Bible is food to our soul. And how can we be in the spirit if we don't get into this body? Amen. Like, you know, if you don't eat, you're going to die. Right. Your flesh going to die. If you don't eat this word of God, your spirit going to die. Amen. Amen. And, you know, it, it's, it's bothersome how, now I'm only speaking about myself, it's bothersome how it's so easy for us not to pick up our body. Amen. Mm. It's not important. It's not as we, we mm. put it to the west side. Mm. And it's so easy for us to just look over it and look over it. But when you accept the will of God and pray that God's will be done upon you, it'll make you yearn more for his word. Yeah. So, you know, and think about that when you're praying. You know, ask God, ask God to allow his will to be done upon you. And the more you get into it, the more you know. Yeah. yeah. The more you desire, yes. And the thing about it is, the more you get into it also, the more the Holy Spirit fills you. That's right. Amen. Yes, the and Holy Spirit just fills you. So, my pastor said, says, you will find help in your daily problems and in your prayer and your praying, you will be empowered to see, to serve God and and do his will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you will become part of God's plan and build up his church. Amen. That's good. And it's us. Yep. That's church. Good. That's good. Yes. Any others? All right. Brother Mark is here. He's a little quiet. <laughs> <I'm> quiet. <laughs> yeah. 
But see, it ain't going to touch you because you're going just to say, hey, I'm going to church. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, you see, I'm going to church mm -hmm. now. And I remember that's what I want. I want it to feel something now. I want to feel it mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But when you first come to town to visit my home, am I going to be so willing to, be to let my door be open to you until I find out if you're really sincere? Mm -hmm. So here I was coming into the church and coming into uh, uh, to, to find God, really not really seeking him, just want to be there to say, okay, I'm going to church so I can see what's going on. But I don't feel nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, until mm -hmm. I truly go in there and I'm truly seeking, that's, right. yes. that's when I'm going to feel yes. what we feel. That's right. Because a lot of people feel like you just walk in church and, hey, okay, I joined and, yeah. and I'm ready. And I had to talk about this with my granddaughter. You can't just walk up there and say, oh, I want to get baptized. And you're going to feel different just how mm -hmm. you said it. Yeah. you got to be sincere with God. Yes, yeah. in your heart. Because yeah. if you ain't sincere with him, no, you're not going to. Why am I going to give you a good feeling? Mm -hmm. Right. And you ain't ready to give me nothing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know? God always you knows what we do. You sincere, and you're going to get what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to feel it. You're gonna, you, it it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch hope to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? But if you're going in there and you're just going up there to stand up there and say, yeah, you know, I want to be baptized. Um, no, you're not going to feel anything because you're just going to be sincere. And, and a lot of times we can't go off our vision. Amen. You know, you got to go off the spirit within you. Amen. You know, it's a, it's a feeling, but it's not a feeling. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, go off their feeling and if they don't feel something, they depress. Yes. Or they they're looking for the something. The devil is going to give you a, a jacked up feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, then all of a sudden, you know, one day you feel like you're going, one day you don't feel like you're going. Mm -hmm. You're going off your feeling and this and that. But and you can't come to God without your feeling. You That's right. You have to come to Him sincere. That's right. Yes. Because, like I said, until you come sincere, no, you're not going to feel anything that, right, you, right, right. You, that you feel like you ought to feel. Well, I like the way you put it, but I want to add this to it. You have to seek God there you go. with sincerity and in truth. Because he already knows. Know he heart. already knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. So he knows exactly who's sincere. I'm going to tell you, you mentioned baptizing. The young man who was one of the young men who, were, who was baptized on Sunday, it touched my whole spirit. When he stood up here and said, yes. Satan yes, is he messing with me. And I'm getting back to so he won't mess with me. Oh, he knew who to run to. He knew who to run to. And you know, at that moment, I said, ooh, I probably should be giving my uh, baptism uh, testimony. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you guys, when I was baptized in December, I lived with chronic pain on my left side. I have a wrist that is permanently damaged. My blood pressure, I had hypertension, extreme hypertension. And when I went down in that water, God had already told me, when you come up, you're going to come up anew. I don't have pain on my left side. Amen. I don't have pain in my wrist. Amen. And I don't take blood pressure pills. Amen. Now, Good. you know, God deals with each and every one of us individually. Yes. We all have our separate relationship with God. What God may do for me, he may not do for you. Amen. But he is doing for you. Yeah. Just what yeah. you need. That's right. He's not going to do the same thing for you that he did for me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in sincerity and in truth, he knows our heart. Yeah. You know, so. He always say, he knows my heart. I can say, he do know your heart. Yes, he do. He do really Be careful saying that. Saying that. He <laughs> but he do know your heart. Yes, he do. Yes, Brother Marks. Yes, uh, very quickly, but uh, I want you to go back. I want to go back mm -hmm. and I'm moving forward. Okay. First, uh, uh, in the same book of one, I'm, uh, in chapter 10, the reason why uh, it came to my spirit and came across the cloud line is because we are living in, well, it, it was always the time, but now it's more difficult, and in terms of discernment. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be a subject because we're still in the same book. However, I'm just going to go ahead in chapter 10 to make to conclude the point. Okay. Discernment. 
Now, in chapter 10, the same woman, Paul was talk talking about the Israel, meaning Jew, which was still believing the law that we are talking about. They have they have the zeal. You see, he said, I don't want to I'm gonna make a point, but I don't want to go in with the entire uh, woman ten, but they have the zeal, but since they were still end up in the law, believing the law, mm -hmm. lack of knowledge mm -hmm. put them in a bad situation. So now, if you go further, and, and, and chapter 10 continue, in verse 10, I mean 15, this is what, this is what happened now. He said, um, hiding, no, excuse me, thank you God. How? Then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Question mark. And faith come by, come by. Hearing and believing. And, 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 and hearing. Okay, so it's a question mark. Now it continues. You know? And how shall we preach except they be sent mm -hmm. as it is written? So that's, that was the point of continuing. So now you cannot go and preach without a permission without sin by God. Yes. Yes. So you cannot go and offer your opinion based, of course, life, merit, circumstances can uplift them because you survive, you got strength or patience, it will count. However, I would rather have or oh, whether listen to God's opinion, or oh, maybe God can use you as a messenger to send his message, that's fine. If I can discern and identify spirit, discern spirit. So, yes, but of course, I would rather listen to God's opinion. Having said that, the reason why I bring this point back, although we are in the same book, I'm not trying to go ahead because the next chapter 10, it's me, so I already saw it coming. So I wanted to make that point when you said you scared, and then when I said speak, so I wanted to put all together to let you know specifically now there will be people I, I don't want to give my opinion that's, some, that's not my opinion however if you don't have the spirit of discern, identify the truth, and that's when it has that's when it comes to a spiritual uh, relationship, even Jesus said that I don't want to go deeper, uh, further, further, further far away, but People, Jesus said, there will be time they're going to say, he's here, go over there, find him over there. You're going to find him over there. You're going to find him over there. At this, you know, at this time. So now, if you don't have the ability to identify and have the spirit of discernment, yes. to confirm, because, yeah, I don't want to call him the enemy. Whatever. I don't want to use that terminology. But the fact of the matter is, he's a liar. He's going to come to you. He's going to preach like an angel. He's going to preach. He knows the way. He's going to preach. He's going to make you believe that he is the one. How are you going to discern? How are you going to identify unless you have the spirit? The spirit. I didn't want to go so far. Amen. But I wanted to make that point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If preach, if someone's not going to preach the word of God, you're going to, you're going to be sent. By whom? Thank you. Amen. Yes, that was real good, Brother Mark. I like that. Because you're right. You know, if you, if you don't have the spirit, how can you have discernment? If you don't have what God is supplying you need, because you're not reaching out to God, like you said, they're going to be running from here to there. They're not going to know who to listen to. People are going to be preaching, and there's going to be a lot of false. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so you have to be able to. Yes, yeah, indeed, yeah, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. How do you, thank you. And if, oh. if, if you don't have the spirit of God, oh. you will not know the truth. You won't know. I think, oh. Yes, amen. The only way you're going to get the spirit of God, man, is with this word. With the word. A lot of people think that, you know, they can just get the 
spirit, you know, and everything, but they don't have to study the word. Right. And I got the spirit, but you know. And, and, I, and I have to, I'm sorry, I'm going to speak back off of that. That's uh, what Paul said. You know, I, I didn't mean, yeah, that's what he said in chapter 10. He said, he said, oh, I don't want to, I mean, I'm sure we're going to read it again. He said they have, they have the zeal. Yeah. Yeah. Israel. They have the zeal, yes. but lack of knowledge. Yes. Because they don't accept Jesus. Jesus is the end of the law. Point Bob, the end of the law. Yes. Meaning, if you still believe in the law, and Jesus is the end of the law, I know you, I know you love God. I know you love Jehovah. I know Moses is your man. I know you know Moses is your God, but guess what? Now it's over. Yes. It's the end. Now, I know you, come on, I know you practice whatever you practice to show how much you love Jehovah Jaha. But do you believe Jesus is the end of the law? Hmm. No, then lack of knowledge. Thank yeah. you. I know you love God. I know you, you do sacrifices. I know you, you do your Sabbath. I know you close everything after seven. Then you go on your own and pray. I know you do all that. But do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Do you believe the Savior? There you go. Do you believe he's the end of the law? Yeah. If the not, lack, but the lack of knowledge is not studying this word. Yeah. Right. This is the knowledge right here. Of course. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not going to know this thing. This yes, you are. Indeed. Right. So it's lack of knowledge. But also, with that being said, it's funny because I just had this conversation today with a friend of mine. You know, I remember way back when when I used to say, oh, I don't need to go to church. The church is in my heart. I carry the church in my heart. That is not true. <laughs> and I have to thank God Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I oh, apologize. No, no, you didn't cut me off. I want to confirm something. Oh, okay, you okay. You know what? Don't ask. You see, okay. that's what I, I said. Don't, 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 don't wait for what? Don't ask what you ask for. You mean, it just is no, a way. Now, now, I'm sorry. This is, you know you said lack of knowledge because you don't read the Bible? Let me say something even. You know, the, the, the people that used to, I'm not saying that. I want to use the language so we can make it clear so people can understand it. Even Jesus said, don't do what they do. You may know the law, but if you don't practice it. A lot of people read the Bible. You can read the Bible and know the Bible in the back of your head, but if you don't have the love of God to display what you read, to demonstrate what you read, to come out of you. Yeah, to yeah, you can have the knowledge. Yeah. You can have the knowledge of reading the Bible, but that's what he's talking about flesh. He's talking about spiritual. It's not about reading physically. Well, a lot of people read the Bible like a regular book. Yeah. You know, you like if you read the Bible. And, and and be sincere about it. The spirit comes in and let you it, it lets you see what's in between the exactly. the lines. It's a lot, a of people, a lot of people look at it as a book and they don't really understand. This is why it's so special. You That's why you don't say read the Bible. You say study the Bible. You're absolutely right because you know what you can read it if it does if it doesn't allow you to understand if it doesn't reveal it to you. Exactly. You can read it. Exactly. If, you, if, you, if you can read it, you can read it. Really but however, right. yeah. Do you have a relationship for him to reveal to you? Right. You didn't hear to Peter what you just told me. You didn't just tell me. My father revealed that to you. It's a revelation. Anybody can. If you know how to read, you can read it. But can you practice what you read? Right. Huh? Can you? Yeah. And do you know law? We're talking about law again. The law, the, the, the priest, the high priest, they, they know the law. They know everything about the law very well. They will tell you what to do, of course. But he didn't reveal them to you. Yeah. No, they will tell you what to do, but at the same time, they're not doing what they're telling you. They do it. That's what you know. Look yeah. what they do. Believe me, they're not all that. Well, that's what I was saying about me yeah. saying, oh, I carry the church in my heart. Well, God's word tells us mm -hmm. that we need to be under a pastor. So we need to come to a body of Christ mm -hmm. in order, you know, to help us along the way. Mm -hmm. 
We're not supposed to just read our Bibles like we read in a book. Keep it to ourselves. And keep it to ourselves. We need to be under our, our wonderful pastor. Amen. Yeah, so. So much was said that and that's why I, I got to jump in and okay. say a few things as well. At the moment that we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit fills us. Amen. The Holy Spirit fills us, seals us, mm -hmm. and uh, the Holy Spirit is a deposit of what God promises that there is going to be so much more to come. Mm -hmm. So the moment we accept Christ as Savior, we get filled with God's Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to us to allow God to continually work with us. And we just can't expect, as Pastor Dan said, Mark said, we can't just expect God to do everything. Mm -hmm. We have to do our part by getting in the Word mm -hmm. and studying. Mm -hmm. And when we study, if it's not revealed to us by the Holy Spirit, then we are lacking knowledge, spiritual knowledge. So we must, whenever we pray or read the Bible, whenever we're trying to study God's Word, we need to make sure we're praying and that God, please reveal yourself to me. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit reveals himself to us, we need to make sure that we don't refer. Sometimes we do that out of our custom. We refer to the Holy Spirit as a it. The Holy Spirit is not it. The Holy Spirit is he. It's a person. He is a person. So when we refer to the Holy Spirit, we refer to him as him because he's a part of the Trinity. And when we have the Holy Spirit within us, we can try the spirits by the spirits. We can identify, we have revelation now, we have discernment when the Spirit is in us. Amen. And we know when, something, when a Spirit does not like God is present, or something is wrong, or something is out of place, the Holy Spirit is an indicator in us to let us know what's right and what's wrong. Amen. Fantastic. Where Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, so... So now I'm going to read 14 through 17. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought you about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Amen. And now if we are children, then we are heirs. Woo, woo, hallelujah. Heirs of God and co-heirs with the Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Amen. Now that is rich. To know that accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior, to know that asking God's will to be done upon my life is going to make me an heir, why would I turn from that? Amen. This is very rich to me because it just shows me that God is so good. I can't go wrong. And it makes me want to stay where I'm at, spiritually. So, I also like sorry, I also like when it says and by him, you guys are going to understand this when I say it. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. I like that because as a child coming up, see God had his hand on me for a long time. And as a child growing up, I wasn't so close to my dad. And I used to always tell my friends, my father is above. And it was the, you know, as I look back on it now, I think like, well, that was kind of strange, but that's just how I always felt. He was my father. And my dad was just my dad. So when it said, Abba, Father, I said, man, I've been right for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, it gave me confirmation. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and it, it just, that was, that part was just really rich for me. And, you know, 
Any other comments? Yeah, I really like uh, that very first verse. I mean, it, it, it says a lot. It says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Yes. So conversely, if a person is not led by the Spirit of God, then whose children are they? Yeah. Exactly. And that can sit all by itself. And not only that, I find it quickly on. Can you imagine if that spirit come to mess with you, try or attempt it to mess with you, or try to even make you think, oh, don't worry, I am one of these children too. Mm. Mm. But, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, don't worry. And then you're not able to confirm and identify, oh yeah, you are one of these. You see, you see, they want it. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Who yeah. are you? What kind of spirit are you? If you're not children of God. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. That's well, scary. You know, I, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, and, and Pastor might have to help me with this. I, I had a question presented to me a few months ago, and I was asked, are we all children of God? Well, of course, my answer was yes, but that is not true. As we search our Bible, I do apologize if Bridget, I have my notes in the car. We are not all children of God. Because if we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, right. we cannot truly say we are children of God. Amen. But there is a verse in the Bible, and I'll let you all know. Pastor, I already told you. I, don't, I just don't remember where it is. Okay. okay. But there is a, uh, a chapter and a verse in the Bible that shows us that we are not all children of God. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Any other? No. I, th I think in our last book we, we went over something like that. In the last, yes, we did. No, in the last sure. study, yeah, we did. And in seven. Yeah, it's probably it was definitely in there. Um, the son of the children of the devil. Yeah. Indeed, yes, that's what it yes. says. <laughs> It says that in our Bible, yeah, yeah. if, if you do not accept these things and accept God's word, we are not all children of God. Some of us are children of Satan. Mm -hmm. I love that again, Ms. Richard, because we are all created by God. Yeah. He created us all, and he loves everyone, mm -hmm. and he puts a plan in place for those who accept him to become his children. Yes. And if we accept that plan, then we become the children of God. And from the verses you just read, there's some benefits for being God's children. Amen. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. Well, see, we, like, you say, we, like you said, we're kind of like children, you know, God in the flesh, you know, because we all made out of flesh. Uh -huh. and God made us all. Right. So when we come to the Spirit, we are not all there. Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> Any others? Okay, we're going to move on to uh, verse 18 through 21. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of one who subjected it in hope. Wait. <coughs> not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. The first, verse 18, it says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing mm. with the glory that will be revealed Amen. in us. Amen. And you know, once we accept God 
and Jesus Christ our Lord. People can actually look at you and see the difference in you. You know, it, to watch a person come from <clears throat> doing everything wrong to changing their life, accepting God and accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and their whole life being changed. In this fleshly body, we don't always admit that man, look what God has done for them. We don't admit that. We're selfish. We look down our noses at others. You know, instead of being happy for someone and rejoicing with them, we want to tear them down. And that verse 18, our present suffer. Because we definitely suffer on this earth. If we don't have God's grace, we are doomed to suffer. I done did a lot of suffering in my day before I, I accepted it. Yeah, verse 18, you know, it says, you know, with all the stuff we're going through right now, yeah. the coronavirus, all this yeah. going against, people got to die alone, people got to do mm -hmm. all this old stuff, we, we, you know, everything's all feel like it's just all torn down, and our, our, our spirits are torn down, and we don't have all the things that we've been having, but see, none of this is uh, compared to the glory that God has in store yeah. for us in the future. You know, when he comes in the time, you know, all this stuff is going to be nothing. Right. You know, they won't even compare, mm -hmm. not even a little bit, to what God's going to do. Yes, yes. And, and we don't, <clears throat> we don't have to suffer mm -hmm. if we just take the time to accept God and his will. Mm -hmm. We don't wait have to on. suffer. Wait yeah, on. just wait on. Any others? Yes, yes. I teach yes. you. Uh, I, I, I love the way Paul sets this up. He sets this thing up beautifully. Mm -hmm. So in verse 17, he tells the believers that, hey, I've got some great things in store for you. And if you think about it, he says that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. So that means everything that Christ gets, we get. Yes. And think about what Christ left to come down here to be with us. Mm -hmm. Whatever he left, he says that we can have all of that when we um, are his. And I think he says that specifically in verse 17, because 18 says that we're going to suffer. Uh, 18 says, I consider that our present suffering are not worthy. So in 17, he says, I've got some great things in store for you. Uh, if you just persevere, if you hold on, mm -hmm. if you trust me, mm -hmm. if you walk faithfully, I know it's going to be difficult, but if you hold on, I've got some great things in store for you. As a matter of fact, you're going to suffer for me. You're going to suffer because I suffer. Mm -hmm. Christ says, I suffer. Yes. And if you're trying to be like me, what makes you think you're not going to suffer? Mm -hmm. But if you suffer, i got some great things in store for you. Yes. So I think those verses, you kind of set, set it up. Yes, I like that, Pastor. Yes. And I have a reference to that. It says, there is a price for being identified with Jesus, along with the great treasures. Ah. Paul mentioned the suffering that Christians must face. With kind, what kind of suffering are, are we to endure? The first, the first century to lead believers, there was, there was economy, economy and social prestation. What is the study? P E R S E C U T. S P E R S E. I O N. Okay, P E R. Persecution. 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 I don't know why I want to say persecution. Prosecution. And some even face death. We too must pay a price for following Jesus. In many parts, in many parts of today's world.
is where Christians is tolerated or encouraged. Christ must be must not become complex. I mean, it's all checked up. What is this thing? What, what? C. C. And I know the word M. C O M. C O M. P L. P L. P C E N T. C O M P L E. And then what else? Mm -hmm. What was the P L A C E N T. Complacent. 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 To live as Jesus did. Serving others. Giving up one's own life, re resisting pressure, pressure to com confirm the world, confirm to the world, always ex ex exact, always ex exit a advice. Okay. Nothing we suffer, however, come can compare to the great peace Amen. that Jesus paid Amen. to save us. I'm sorry about that. You. Uh, no, you're fine. That's okay, you're fine. Like my eyes get blurry, and then I can't pronounce something. Well, one thing I, I would like to say, that's like, we have to go through the storm because Jesus went through many storms. Yes. He suffered a lot. Mm -hmm. So for us to be on this earth mm -hmm. and think we can just go and have a rosy day every day yeah. is unheard of. Yeah. And when we go through the storm, that's all set up for us to reach out to God. Mm -hmm. So if you never go through anything, mm -hmm. how you gonna get to how you gonna get to know God? Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta go through some things to yes. seek help. Yes. 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 And when we go through those things, we reach out to God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how, you know, every time I go through the storm, that's, that's how I reach out to God even more. Because I know that's from where my help comes from. No man or woman of this earth can help me. Amen. Amen. That's why yeah. a lot of times we just, you know, we just conform to the ways of the world. Yes, sir. Because we don't want to be, be kind of ashamed. You know, a lot of people, you know, like I said, when they come in here, they just hold it in the town. You get out of that world. And you know, you try to be like you are here, you'll be persecuted. Yeah, we, people don't want to go out and talk about the word. Right. You know, they don't want to go to work and say, you know, I read the book of Romans or oh. I read the, They don't want to tell people yeah, that. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know you're a Christian. <laughs> that, that's, you know, it, we can laugh about that, but it's true. It's true. It's true. You, you know, know. I don't want to know more than they see you in church. Yeah. See you on the internet in church. You in church. It's funny you say that, Reverend Ben, because on my job, you know, people talk to me and, you know, I control a huge property. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember when a few of them got inkling that, you know, I would go to church and yeah. strive to, to be an evangelist. Yeah. You know, they come around, they be cussing, and then they was like, oh, I didn't know you, I didn't know you was an evangelist. Well, I'm still human, you know. I, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to change you because I changed me, you know. So a, a lot of times that they recognize it that is good, but but a lot of times we don't want to show that. That's right. We don't want to show that side of us. You, know, yeah, but, you know, we want to keep all that we know of God to ourselves. It's so uncomfortable. It makes us uncomfortable. Yeah, it makes us uncomfortable. Then everybody stop wanting to hang around you. Yeah, yeah. The persecution stuff. There you go. When I step in my shoes, I let them all at the job know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm this proud to, that, to wear this top. No yes. Brother Mark, you Yes, may I please? Yes. Right. Of course, we talking about suffering. Mm -hmm. And the same Paul also identify or distinguish the type of suffering. And can be saying it's a spiritual warfare, and not just suffering physically. Yeah, Let me yeah. just clarify this yeah. is why we talked about the spirit earlier. Yeah. yeah, This is why you have to know who you are. And if you are a child, you know, you're not just gonna suffer. I mean, for some people, they have a little headache, they have a little pain in the body, they call it suffering. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
I can't. Yes, sure. Now, okay. So now, you think you're suffering. You can express that to you. It's not a fight between flesh and blood. It's a spiritual warfare. Yes, so yes. now, if you're going to suffer physically, then you're going to suffer spiritually. Yes. 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 So now, what remedy do you have to fight the spiritual part? Uh, uh, you may have a remedy for the physical part. Oh, let me get to our spirit. I'll feel better. Yes. Let me get a couple of pen That's good. Yes. That's good. But what do you have for the spiritual part? Yes. When you are suffering, and some people may be suffering that they've been acknowledging because they have the physical body well, but the spiritual part is suffering, yes. but they don't even know it. Yes. If you don't know it, how do you get the remedy for it? Uh, Excuse me. Yes. That's good. So now Paul, the same Paul, I don't want to go way ahead, expressed to us, this is not a fight with flesh and blood. It's a spiritual warfare. I don't want to, we're still on our subject because we're speaking about spiritual, we're speaking about spirit, we're speaking about fight. And then we try to identify and distinguish which fight. So now, can you imagine if you got both fight on you? Paul experienced it all. Paul experienced fight where his body got hurt, he got this torn in his body. It was painful. He requested help. God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. He was suffering pain in his body, right? And spiritually, in his spirit. But, but, but he was, obviously, you know, his spirit was confirmed. It was firm. And he, he believed his spirit was strong. He said, not pain, okay. But he felt a little bit, oh, can you take it away from me, God? But even Jesus said, can you take that, if it's your will, away from me? But the physically, emotionally, it hurts. But what about the next part? The spiritual part. Mm. If you're going to focus on fight, let's focus on both. When you don't have the gratitude to acknowledge, I'm not the one to bring. I mean, I will also make sure that any comments will refer, or any comments will certainly have the backup of the, of the Bible, obviously. That's what we have confirmed from the beginning. Read the word. Obviously, personal experience, personal testimony is great, uplifting, but certainly uh, the, 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 conf the confirmation, the fundamental, like I, we just read, you cannot just go and preach. You've got to be sent. By whom? What message you're going to send? Like the pastor just said. If you don't have God, if you're not God's children, if you don't have God's spirit, with you, what spirit do you have? Amen. Okay, I don't want to go too far, but I wanted to confirm that yes, we sure we, we all know. Yeah. The spiritual warfare part, that's the scary part. Yeah. How do you affect that if you don't have the spirit of God? That's what Paul is saying. Yeah, Further on a different thing. Oh, further, I apologize to the Yes, no, 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 Since we're talking about a fight, yes. uh, I wanted to make sure. Okay. Because. We're all singing looking normal, right? Physically speaking, right? We're not limping. I use myself as an example. I'm not limping, but I'm sitting in normal, right? I don't look sick, right? Physically, do I look like I'm fighting a physical fight? Right, right. But when I'm sitting in my spirit, oh, the last one, I think I'm using that. I, 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 my mind is thinking. This, the other spirit, like you said, the, the other spirit come and try to use my mind when I'm sitting in my spirit. Uh, what can I do to scan? Or, or you, you know what? All the bad things that is going to go according to the good spirit. Right. You see, you're physically being here. You're listening to the us talking, but your mind is somewhere else thinking about evilish things, yes. selfish things, yes. me, 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 thing. 
Let me be the one thing. It's all about me, but it's not about God, but I'm here though. Right. But how do you fight that spirit while you're sitting here listening to God's word, but your mind is not here? Your yeah. spirit is not for the right reason. Right. Your objective is not for the right reason. But if you allow the bad spirit to come, you all can be saved out your sleep. But that's, that's what I'm thinking about the spirit uh, when it's, it's a fight between the spirit. Because you can be sitting here looking very healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't want to sit to me, but you could be saved. I could be saved physically, but physically speaking, we can get up and go. But you're sitting here, but now your spirit is mm -hmm. What can you do to manipulate the word of God to profit you for your own selfishness? But you're sitting here. You look, you look physical fine. Physically you're well. Okay. But if you don't have the spirit of God to come and strain you to rebuke the devil, I'm working for my Lord. Why would I want to gain the wall and then when I have, like you said earlier, that's what Paul said, suffering, you know, suffering. It's not just a physical suffering. Oh, I don't have a job today. Oh, I got coronavirus. It's so hard. No, all those are physical parts. The physical body, okay. Okay, you can take the pain. You can take the physical pain. It's okay. But what about the spiritual pain? Amen. Amen. I agree. And I agree with that because, like I said, everything that's went on with this situation and passing, you know, what I've been going through with this situation with since the death of my son, I've really been battling like that. Yeah. Fighting. Because I've had so many thoughts in my mind that. <clears throat> Of what I want to do, hmm. what I would love to see. Hmm. Ha! I know what you're saying because I have so ha. much anger and I have so much hurt. Ha! I haven't given ha. up my quick grief on my son. Ha! 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 Child. 
So going forward, you want to fight? Then you don't need him. But you want him to fight for you. Why do you want him to be your judge? The fight is not your fight. The battle is not yours. He didn't even allow his son to leave. So he can leave. So he can see your son again and leave with him forever. If you go ahead and fight back on your own, then the battle is yours. And it's not his. Now you know it's okay. You will see him again. That's what you just said. Nothing can compare, including death. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Woo! Okay, I, I'm going to read um, verse 22 to 25. This is rich. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pain of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, mm -hmm. the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Yes. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Mm -hmm. Who hopes for what they already have? Mm -hmm. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it and what I see here Just as Jesus, again, like I said, he went through so many things. Mm -hmm. Why would we have to go through so many things? Mm -hmm. Ooh, but as we go through the things that we have to go through, mm -hmm. we should be reaching out to God. We should be seeking God. Because while we're here in these fleshly bodies, mm -hmm. yet for a little while, mm -hmm. we are going to experience many things, mm -hmm. many pains. Mm -hmm. But do we act with our flesh? Mm -hmm. Or do we seek God mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to fight the battle? Mm -hmm. We have to allow the spirit to take over. We have to allow our father to fight our battles. We have to allow him. And in these flesh and bodies, this is what Paul is telling us. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. But as long as we have this word, mm -hmm. we can seek this word. And we can move on. We can triumph mm -hmm. over that flesh. The glory coming that we can't fathom. Yes, yes. And so to be just to add to that, um, when the fall of man occurred, of course, creation was up.
upset. Things change when, when man failed. And this verse here is saying that we know that creation, since the fall of man, has been groaning and yearning for things to get right and be put back like they used to be. Creation is groaning, and we too are groaning. Uh, we're groaning because the spirit in us bears witness with God's spirit that this world is not right. Things have changed since the fall of man. And it goes on to say that this is a process. It talks about the process. Um, we groan inwardly, waiting for the adoption of sons, of, of sonship. So the adoption, when you adopt a child, you know, that child gets all the rights and privileges as biological children. So we know that um, God's uh, chosen people were the Israelites because they rejected him. We have been grafted in and we've been adopted. So we get all the same privileges and rights as do uh, his uh, firstborn children, if you will. And it says uh, uh, also in here that we eagerly await the sonship. So when we got saved, we become sons of God. But it, it, and why here does it say we await sonship? Because it's a process. It's a process. And it goes on to say that our, uh, our sonship, the, the redemption of our bodies. So when we were saved, our, our spirits were saved. So you know we're a three-part being, uh, spirit, soul, and body. When, when Jesus, when we accepted Jesus in, as our Savior, our spirits were saved. Spirits were saved. That's a done deal. Our minds are being saved, which is the soul. The soul, our minds are being saved. And like Brother Mark said, if, if we were to open somebody's head up on a Sunday morning and see what they're thinking, some of them thoughts wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be holy. And then the people in the game told them. Now, you look at the <laughs> so, you know, our minds are not saved, but they're being saved. Uh, and our bodies shall be saved. So the spirit is saved, the mind is being saved, and the body shall be saved. We'll get new bodies. So it's a process. It speaks about the process. Thanks, guys. Any others? Okay. <clears throat> 26 through 27. In the same way, the Spirit, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us yes, through yes. wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes God's people in accordance with the will of God. Amen. Any comments? So, for me, I like the verse, the, the verse 26 that says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. As we feel weakened in our spirit, we have the word telling us that the spirit helps us in our weakness. And um, I have to say glory to God for that. You know, because we come up against things that make us weak. No, sometimes I don't know what to pray for. I have that spirit that will help me along the way. Any comments? Any others? Pastor? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay, verse 28 through 30. And we know that in all things, God works for the good yes, yes. of those who love him. For the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. 
that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Yeah, yeah. Those he justified, he also glorified. Amen. That, that's, that's real rich within mm -hmm. itself. Because we definitely know God works all things for the good. You know, um, I'm sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. so just give me a second. <laughs> So to read these verses here for me, it lets me know that God is in control and I must follow. Amen. I must follow his word. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, God's word, all things for the good. I like verse 30, and it says, and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now, I have a question for my pastor on that. When it says, Pastor, and those he Destined, he also called. Can you give me uh, an understanding? Yes. Um, when the Bible talks about, we know that all things work together for good, people who recognize that know that everything that happens to them is not good, but God can use it for good. And all of this was predestined, or God foreknew us. I mean, this will, this will, I can't even articulate it closely enough because it blows, it blows my mind even think about it. But God knew who would accept him. And so because he knew they would accept him, he called them to do whatever he called them to do. And then he went back in time and let everything roll out. And even though he knew who was going to accept him, he still gives that person the choice to choose what he knows they're going to choose anyway. I mean, it, it, it'll blow your mind. Think about it. Yes. He gives us free will, but he knows what we're going to choose anyway. So he predestined us. And so your question is, what, is, what does that all mean? Uh, to me, of course, there's many other interpretations, but I mean, to me, it means that God knew ahead of time, before the world began, who he was going to use who was going to accept them, and based on that, he called them to do whatever he called them to do. That's exactly mm -hmm. how I, I thought it was, mm -hmm. but I just want to be sure. Without the call, you can't be saved. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's being called to be a minister, but it's a call to be saved. That's okay. A lot of people, you know, think that's being called to be a minister, but without the call, you cannot be saved. There's several calls. There's several. There's, several. there's, several. there's a call to salvation. There's a call to vocation. There's a call to ministry. And if we're going to accept our call to vocation, we have to be saved first. We cannot, you know, accept that call without accepting the first call. It's the call of salvation. Amen. 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 Pastor, can I, can I get you to read this? So this is pretty much what you're saying. My, my glasses keep falling up, and now my eyes are all puffy. So this is pretty much what you're saying. 
God works in all things, not just isolated incidents for our good. This does not mean that all that happens to us is good. Evil is prevalent in our fallen world, but God is able to turn every circumstance around for our long-range good. Note that God is not working to make us happy, but to fulfill his purpose. Not, uh, note also that this promise is not for everybody. It can be claimed only for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Those who are called are those the Holy Spirit convinces and, en and enables to receive Christ. Such people have a new perspective, a new mindset on life. They trust in God, not life's treasures. They look for their security in heaven, not on earth. They learn to accept, not resent pain and persecution because God is with him. Ah. Amen. Woo! Everything that you were just saying. Mm. And I yeah. wanted to make sure it got out right. It's that is it's that tough eyes. It is. <laughs> but it just backed up exactly what, you, like you said, mind blowing. Mm. Because. Well, I asked Pastor to give me a little clarity because as, when I read that, I felt like, okay, those that are caught. Not all of us will accept God. Mm -hmm. I like what Pastor said because that's how I was thinking, but I don't know why I wasn't thinking when bring it out. But before we got here, God already knew us because yes. we were with God. Yes. Our spirits yes. were already with Him. Yes. So He already yes. knew us. He knew who was going to accept Him, who was going to allow his will to be done upon us. He already knew it. So everybody, like I said, will not be called. Um, but those that are, everything that God does is for the good. Amen. And I, I do, Amen. you know, it's, I had this conversation with my friend today and I was telling her, even though you might go through something, but God has the master plan. Yeah. yeah. If you had a headache and couldn't go get on the bus to go to work, maybe God was stopping you from going to get on that bus. You know, you might have been in pain, but he may have had, he needed to be in pain, so you wouldn't go get on that bus. So everything works for God's good. You know, when you accept God and accept his will upon your life, he will look out for you. It might not be the way you want him to look out for you, Amen. but he will definitely look out for you. So even though it might look bad, it's always for God's good. I like that. Image. Let's beat that word to death. And so even though it looks bad, because we love God and we know that he doesn't want to hurt us, whatever he does is for uh, his, his glory and for the upbuilding of the church. And for our good. So when we go through something, that can we really then go through anything that's bad? That, uh, that just posed the question. Can we really ever go through anything that's quote unquote bad if we know that God is doing it for our good? So that helps us mm -hmm. look at what we go through that we consider negative. Yeah, man, I, I don't want to do this. It hurts, it's painful. But I know God's going to get the glory out of this somehow. So as I go through this, I'm going to give God the glory as I go through it because I know he's going to bring good out of it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm going to say one thing. You know, God has different, they call it different names, obviously. But you know one of the names, one of the characteristics? Long suffering. No. Okay, I don't, you don't have to say anymore. Okay, right. we talk about suffering. Right. God said, I am long suffering. You want to be like me? You want, you say, oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Wow. But remember, yeah. one of my characteristics is long yeah. suffering. Yeah. And we talk about suffering? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Suffering? Yeah. Amen. 
And here, uh, just quickly to close what you were saying earlier, all things work together. Exactly. If you have faith, that's what faith is. If I said, okay, God, I put all my faith in you. So therefore, anything that happened, I should be great. If I said, God, I put all my faith in you, okay? And then God is going to suffer. Mm -hmm. And then you said, God, I give, it, I give you all. You take care, take my bottle. You're going to be fine, man. You're going to be fine. Yes. Don't worry. Yes. Take my bottle. <laughs> you know? And then, you talking about suffering? He said, I don't want suffering. And my, one of these heart, you see? Mm -hmm. So, and then another thing I'm gonna feel, oh, thank you, God. I can't stop. I apologize. I gotta stop. I don't wanna keep saying too much. But I wish we had more time. Amen. Okay, so yeah, nine o'clock. So we're I'm gonna read now uh, oh, 31 man. through 36. What then shall we say in response to these things? Mm. If God is for us, who can be against us? Wow. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, mm -hmm. how will he not also, Hallelujah. along with him, graciously give us all things? Amen. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Mm -hmm. It is God who justifies. Mm -hmm. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life yeah, yeah. is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Mm. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Wow. Shall trouble <laughs> or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written? Wow. And that, that, that was real deep for me. Amen. I like when it says, if God is for us, who could be against us? Say that. So when we accept God, I'm going to tell you, I, what I took from these verses here, when I accept God, then I don't have to suffer anymore. Because when I have a problem or I'm going through some things, see, I don't have to wallow in that suffering. Because see, now I know I have a relationship. Exactly. I know I can go and fall down to my knees and cry out to him. And I know he's going to be there. Amen. You know, so, and then it says here, Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Hmm. I also felt like when we have God in our life and we accept God, I almost feel like I'm even more protected from the evils and the trials and tribulations of this earth. And I can only speak for myself when I say, you know, You lost your son, but you're able to get up and go to work. Wow. Yeah. Now, how many people that lose oh, their God. child and they can't even function no more? They turn from God. And look how gracious yes, he yes, has been. Yes, yes. You know, that tells you right there, Evangelist Pearl, you are very, very protected. Because you haven't lost it. You're not in jail. We didn't have to come bail you out. Covered by the blood. Covered. You are covered Amen. in the blood. Still Jesus. You're in the right mind. Right in the. That is. Man, look at God's grace. That is His grace. And that is what we're under. We're under His grace. Amen. Anyone else? Oh, well, just to confirm. Could have been worse. It could have been worse. It just revealed 
Can you imagine if that happened like uh, obviously I'll just move here, I don't know your son, I don't know uh, how many new what's in your town. I don't know the story, but God can revelate them. Can you imagine if that happened prior to the conversion of your son? Amen. Amen. That's what he's telling me to say to you. Can you imagine? Meaning there will be loss of hope. Hope. Oh. Ha! Loss of hope. Hope. I don't know how long. I don't know when he acknowledged and accepted Christ as Paul clearly indicated in the same book we are reading. But can you imagine if that happened prior to even him acknowledging and accepting yeah. Christ? Yeah. Ha! So who can beat the timing? So this is confirmation to inform you. Yes, yes. The pain, yes, he acknowledged the pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. He, he acknowledged that. But it's confirming. Thank it's God. done now. Yes. So now he said, nothing can compare. So look forward. Look forward. Yes. Joy come in the morning, meaning it's not tomorrow morning. I mean, look forward. Okay? So you're gonna be fine. Yes. And your spirit. And he said, he gave him his son so he can live again. But keep that in mind, okay? Can you imagine if that may have happened prior to your son accepting Jesus Christ? Just can you imagine? Yeah. That's all I want to say. Because we all know the one got his wings. Can you imagine? <laughs> and I remember when I first came here this Sunday, the first Sunday, he was walking in God's world, in God's What a reason to rejoice. Amen. What a reason to praise. Hallelujah. You can give the flesh, but you cannot give the spirit. He said, oh, why about the guy that can kill the flesh? Why about the guy that can kill the spirit too? You may kill me physically, but can you kill my spirit? Like the pastor preached the first Sunday I came here. The spirit will go back. To the one that lived forever. Yeah. You see? You will go back to the one that lived forever, meaning that he told you, Count all joy. That's a joy moment right there. Can you imagine? I don't know how long, six years, seven years prior to the conversion, he kept him until. He was up there, working. But Sunday I came, the next Sunday I came back. He wasn't there. And then I didn't even know. It's confirming to you. Yes, yes. Okay, oh yes. God, I, we're, yes. you know, we're working on timing. I know, I'm sorry, guys. So, now, I'm gonna do- uh, Oh, can you imagine? I'm, I'm gonna do verse 36 Ooh. through 39. Mm -hmm. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. Mm. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Mm. No, in all these things, we were more, more than conquerors more than through him who mm. loved us. Mm. Yes. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, oh. neither angels nor demons, mm. neither present nor the future, mm nor any power, mm. neither height nor depth, mm. yes. nor anything else mm. in all creation mm. will be able to separate us oh, from the love of God Confirmation. that is in Christ thank Jesus, you, Jesus our Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Confirmation. What a reason to rejoice. Confirmation. What a reason to rejoice. Confirmation. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Confirmation. We are on this earth yet for a little while. This is 
not our home. Hmm. Hmm. Any comments? Okay, sorry we went a little over. I do apologize for the time. Huh. It has been good it for me. Yes. 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 Thank you. Hmm.